The sun was shining down on this church. It's a beautiful Orthodox church in the middle of town. And, and behind it is just an unfinished mass grave with body bags. US President Biden has called Vladimir Putin a war criminal and says he should face trial over the incidents discovered in Bucha, near the Ukrainian capital Kyiv. Ukraine's President Zelensky accused Russian forces of committing genocide. Evidence has been uncovered of shallow graves, executions of civilians and people with their arms bound, mass graves and the rape of women and children as well. In a moment, we'll be live in the US to assess the President's comment. First this evening to Kiev, and we can speak to Oz Katerji, a journalist who travelled to Butcher today. Uh, Oz, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, I must start then, uh, presumably, and uh, I think we can issue a warning that there will be um, grim detail over the next few minutes, uh, but it's important to understand what you saw, what you witnessed when you travelled to Butcher earlier on today. Yeah, um, forgive me, I've, I've got a dog <clears throat> that I found abandoned at the... Um near a destroyed tank column and he's he's gonna make, probably make some noise if i don't pay attention to him the whole time so i'm i know how he put feels. the camera on so you so so it doesn't seem like i'm trying to take the subject casually because it, it's not casual at all um so yeah the scenes from uh butcher were absolutely horrifying but the it's more important to note that it's not just butcher all of the surrounding towns and villages have horrifying examples of violence that have been committed in them. Um, a lot of the civilian bodies have been clean, cleaned up now. Uh, but, you know, even even while I was traveling through Irpin a few days ago, there were there was a, a man who had been killed uh, on, his, on his bicycle uh, still by the side of the road. And I think that uh, the Ukrainian authorities are going to be finding bodies for a very, very long time to come. And it's not just people who were killed uh, through violence. Today in, in Butcher, there was a house with a 95-year-old woman uh, who looked like she died of natural causes, but her body was in her house rotting. And uh, the Russians had had come in. Um, they'd stolen, they'd looted everything they could. And one of the houses next to this uh, old lady uh, was quite affluent. Um, you know, the, the children's bedrooms had a lot of really expensive stuff in them. And... Uh, the stuff they couldn't steal, they destroyed. They walked into a children's bedroom with a 60-inch television on the wall and they decided that they would, you know, start smashing it with the butts of their rifles. Um, just senseless barbarism. Uh, the idea that they could even pretend that they're here in, in Ukraine on some liberatory mission is just an appalling lie. It's just, there's just no evidence at all to back it up. All of the evidence points in the other direction that they're out here killing, maiming, brutalizing the civilian population of Ukraine. One thing that struck me, Oz, earlier was in these areas um, like Butcha that we're hearing about today and the others that you mentioned, are there still other civilians walking around in the midst of all of, all of this destruction and chaos and carnage? Not just walking around. There were several aid drops today in the centre of Butcha. Uh, hundreds of people were, were there lighting up for food, water. Um, I got to walk around much of Butcher today. And but Butcher's a really affluent suburb, mm. right? It's like um, Hampstead Heath or something, you know? It's like not quite in, 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 it's in the region of Kiev. It's not in Kiev City. Uh, but it's, it's, it's an affluent place. It's a place with nice parks, with nice buildings, with, you know, uh, it's rich suburbs. Um, so... <sighs> You know, as I said, it's just absolutely appalling uh, what's happened there. But yeah, there are a lot of people still inside um, who who aren't who who have been cut out cut off from the world for weeks now, um, and who are very happy to see the Ukrainian army back on their streets. Yeah. In terms then of that, of I suppose the resistance, the pushback um, around Kyiv, we've been hearing reports of that in the last day or two as well, of, of, of areas being liberated. Uh, is there a feeling of optimism? Is, is that moving and sweeping across the regions that you are seeing and that you have visited in the last few days? I mean, there's, there's the joy that people have when they initially are freed from something like this. Um, and then, you know, when the journalists turn up we turned up in the centre of town today. Several people came up to us, just tears. I mean, I don't speak a word of Ukrainian or Russian. Um, so I had to have a translator, you know, telling me bit by bit what was happening. 
but they would come crying desperate to tell their stories. Um, it's, it was a really difficult, really difficult day today. Um, there was a, a mass grave uh, in the church in the center of town. The sun was shining down on this church. It's a beautiful Orthodox church in the middle of town. And, and behind it is just an unfinished mass grave with body bags. Uh, those people have been through a lot and, um, and the evidence is there for the entire world to see what the Russians did to those people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you okay, Oz? Are you? I'm okay. Yeah, right? yeah. We can we can continue. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Um, I mean, I, it's just a kind of a final concluding thought, I suppose, in terms of the response, the international response. So, President Zelensky was out himself in in Bucha today, and has obviously spoken as strong as character characteristically strongly as he always does about what he described as genocide um, being committed against the people of Ukraine. I just wonder how meaningful or meaningless the international response to these atrocities is feeling where you are on the ground. I think the response that has uh, led to weapons being given to Ukraine so they can defend their own people um, has been an incredibly positive one and has allowed the Ukrainians, uh, God knows what would happen if, if, if Butcher hadn't been liberated. Maybe we'd never know the stories of what happened to those people. Um, but but beyond that, I mean, it's pathetic, really. It really is. I mean, Russia's been getting away with mass murder for, for decades, for generations, um, with impunity. So much of it is, is all on concentrated in Vladimir Putin's hands. Um, and, and the international community's general reaction is, well, Russia's in the Security Council, mm. Russia has nuclear weapons, so I guess there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm, I, I, it makes me sick to live in a world like that. It, it, it does. I mean, there, there has to be some form of accountability. There has to be a line drawn in the sand. If it's not here, then where? You know, if you tolerate this, your children will be next. This is what's going to happen. It happened in Syria. It happened in Chechnya. It happened in Georgia. It's happening in Ukraine. It doesn't end here. If it's not stopped, it won't end here. And that's the only thing I can tell people, that the international community's response to this has been abysmal, pathetic, risable, mm. gruesome. Mm.